hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel so in today's video i just want to be helping my grade 10 11 and 12 with their algebra right so i'm just going to be using grade 12 past papers for algebra because um the algebra you guys do is the same right so i'm just gonna have one point on questions and i'm going to label the questions according to easy moderate and hard right or challenging rather so the first question says 2x is equal to 0. So you have two brackets here. So all you have to do since it's equal to 0 is say 2x is equal to 0. Right? So 2x is equal to 0 or x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. And then x divided by 2 will leave me with x is equal to 0 divided by 2 is equal to 0. So whatever I do on my left-hand side, I also need to do on my right-hand side, right? So, or, right? So I have x squared minus 1. What is this? Difference of two squares. So whenever I have difference of two squares, I will open two brackets. I will put a plus, I will put a minus, and then I'll put x1, one, x1. One. And all this has to be equal to 0. Therefore, x is equal to, remember, x minus 1 is equal to 0, or x plus 1 is equal to 0. So I have this x plus minus 1 is equal to 0. When I take the 1 to the other side, it is currently negative, so it's going to become positive. So plus 1, or x is equal to, I do the same, it's x plus 1 is equal to 0. So when I take this 1 that is currently positive to so the other side of the bracket, it becomes negative 1. And then you are done with the first question, right? So this is a two-mark question, very, very easy. Let's go on to the next question, right? So this was easy. Okay, let's look at what 1.1.2 is saying. 1.1.2 is saying it's a four-mark question, so I'm guessing it might be moderate x minus 6 plus 2 over x is equal to 0. And they say here that correct to two decimal places, right? So what you want to do is use what we call the quadratic formula. Because if they are telling you that you should um, round off your answer to two decimal places, it means that it has no factors. So what are you going to do? You are going to use the quadratic formula. It must be in your formula sheets. So if you don't know it as of yet, go to your formula sheet and look at it, right? So what is the most interest what is the most um interesting term in all those three things, right? It's this one, the two over x. So what I'm going to do is to multiply every single term here by two by x, right? Reason being that remember your inverses, to remove a negative I add, right? To remove a multiplication, I divide. To remove a division, I multiply, right? So I'm trying to remove this division sign, this divide by x. So what am I going to do? I'm going to multiply every single thing by x. So x times x, x squared, right? x times negative 6, negative 6, x plus 2 over x times x, the x's cancel and I am left with plus 2 is equal to 0, right? Now I'm in my standard form. Now I can actually go ahead and use the quadratic formula. It says x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, right? What is my b on the quadratic formula? It is the term, it is the coefficient of x, not the coefficient of x squared. By coefficient, I mean the number that is before the variable. The var a variable is basically in, alph in alphabet, right? So my b is negative 6. So I still put the negative that I found there, right? b is negative 6, so I put it in brackets, negative 6. Plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is negative 6 squared minus 4 my a is the is the coefficient of x squared and there's one in this case 
times c the c is actually a number that is without the variable so the only number without a variable here is two so that means my c is two right so over two times a my a is one and then i put this in my calculator right so six plus the square root of six squared minus four my a is one my c is two all over two right okay then this is the answer that you get you guys see that you actually get a decimal hence they said um write it to two decimal places remember i said plus or minus so i had a plus here so now i'm going to put a minus right and then now i have four is equal to 0, 0,35. We are done with this question. You already have six marks. You pass with what you know, not what you don't know. So my matriculants, as you write your preliminary exams, remember that. Right? So let's go to the next question. So this question is out of three marks. So it's an easy question. Point three. Please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Plus four squared seven or equal to six. So remember in the first question, I had equal to zero. Hence, I could just say x minus one is equal to zero or x plus four is equal to zero. But in this case, I actually have a six. So I cannot do that. Now I need to actually solve the problem. Now how am I going to do that? I'm going to multiply every single thing inside Right, every single thing inside this bracket with everything in here. So it's going to be x times x, x squared. Right, x times 4. So everything, this should multiply everything inside this. This should multiply everything inside here. So x times x, x squared. x times 4 plus 4x minus, now this has multiplied this and this. So now it needs to go to the next term. Negative 1 times x minus x negative 1 times 4 minus 4 is greater than or equal to 6 right so now what am i going to do i'm going to work with my like terms the only thing that has x squared here is this term so i just put it as it is x squared and then i have these two like terms plus 4 minus 1 so i have a plus 3 x so it's the same thing as saying 4 minus 1 3x right and then i have a negative 4 but i also have this 6 so remember the inverses this is positive so to take it to the other side i need to make it negative so i'm going to have negative 4 negative 6 excuse me which is going to give me negative 10 i still have my inequality sign zero so most people struggle with their trinomial method right so i suggest to avoid losing marks you'd rather spend an extra minute than lose the three marks unnecessarily what i suggest you do is use your quadratic formula so you're gonna have x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 ac over 2a right negative i showed you that b is 3 right plus or minus the square root of b which is 3 squared minus 4 a is 1 and c is negative 10 right over 2 my a is a 1 then you go to your calculator right i think you should get negative 5 and 2 2 right okay so yes you should get that but remember we are talking about inequalities so there's an extra step that I actually need to do in order to get my marks, right? So what is that step? The step that you need to do is to actually draw a Cartesian plane, right? So what I want you to do is draw a Cartesian plane, right? And then what I want you to do is actually plot the two points. So you have a negative 5 and you have a 2, right? And then what I want you to do, now what I want you to do is to go back to your equation that is in standard form and ask yourself is the coefficient of x squared positive or negative in this case it is positive so that means i have a smiling parabola so i'm going to draw a smiling parabola passing through these 
two points, right? And then what I want you to do now is go back to the very same equation and then look at the inequality sign. The inequality sign is saying that this whole equation needs to be greater than or equal to zero. What does it mean to be greater than or equal to zero? It means that we need to be positive, right? So we, we are looking at the x values that are going to give us positive y values, right? And how am I going to find those values? Think about it. This is the x axis, right? And anything going up, right, is positive. We have a positive y value here. Sorry with the noise. We have a positive y value, two, three, four, five going up, right? So any values that are above the x axis, they give us positive values. And any values that are below the x axis, they give us negative values. Okay, so now what I want you to do is to actually shade the part where my graph is above the x-axis. So you are going to shade here and you are going to shade here. Now what I want you to do is to read from the graph. Where is this graph heading? If you check, the next point is negative 6, right? Then negative 7, negative 8. Any number that is further away, the, the further away, you are from zero the further away you are from the origin the further away you are from the origin the less you become so i'm going to have to say x is less than or equal to negative five right however one thing i also need to mention is that these two shaded parts are separate from each other they are not meeting so if they're not meeting i'm going to put an or x if we look at this it's going towards the greater side of two so x is greater than or equal to two and then you find you then you get then you get your three marks right okay let's look at the last question and this is the hard question i don't like calling things hard they are rather interesting right so the first the question that i'm looking at is 1.1.4 right and it says that the square root of x minus 2 plus 3 is equal to 10 over the square root of x minus 2, right? So this question is a very easy question. I'm, I'm sure that a question like this is definitely going to be in the exam, right? So whenever you see something complicated, what should ring in your head that it it, what should ring in your head is that you can always use the K method, right? What is the K method? The K method is a method that tries to simplify things for you. So this whole thing can be replaced by any variable that you want it to be replaced by. Any complicated thing can be assigned a variable. You are allowed to do that, right? And then you solve the easy parts and then you come back and you substitute it, right? So what looks complicated in this equation, right? So the square root of x minus 2 looks complicated and furthermore it is repeated so that actually hints to me that i should be using the k substitution so what i'm going to say is that k you can call it a whatever you want to call it it's it's just it's a variable it's a, it's an alphabet so it's k is equal to i substitute the, the the this hard thing this thing that seems so complicated so i'm just going to say k is equal to the square root of x minus 2 right so now this complicated thing is represented by k so wherever it is i need to substitute a k so it's going to be k plus 3 is equal to 10 over k right looks better right okay so what's the what's the what, what's the other complicated thing that i have in this equation this over k right what is the sign it's a division sign remember the inverses that i was talking about whenever you have an inverse whatever whenever you have multiplication you will divide right the inverse of multiplication is dividing the inverse of addition is subtracting so in order to take anything to the other side of the brackets you need to do its inverse so this is saying divide by k so what do i need to do i need to multiply by k right so i'm going to multiply every single thing by k so every single thing multiplied by k 
okay? And then I'm going to multiply this k inside the brackets on each and every term. So it's k times k, I get a k squared. k times 3 plus k3. I was supposed to say 3k, but anyways, get the chill, right? k times, so it's 10 over k times k, so this two should cancel out and I get a 10, right? Now I need to put it into my standard form. So this 10 has to come to this side and I'm left with 0. So we have a k squared plus 3k minus 10 is equal to 0, right? You can use your quadratic formula or you can use your factorial skills. So in this example, I'm just going to be using my factorial skills, right? So factor, what, what, what does factorizing a trinomial say? You multiply the first and the last term. So I'm just going to be doing that on the side in pencil, right? So it says multiply the first and the last term. And when you say k squared times negative 10, you get negative 10 k squared. So I need to find two terms. When I multiply together, they give me negative 10 k squared. And when I add together, they give me 3 k, right? So what two terms could those be? It can't be 10 and negative 1. Because as much as it's giving me the product, it also needs to give me the sum, right? 10 minus 1 is a 9. It's not a 3. So what term, when I multiply together, it gives me negative 10. When I add together, it gives me a 3. It should be a 5 and a negative 2. Because 5 times negative 2 is negative 10, right? And 5 minus 2 is actually a 3. So the terms that I'm going to be using are 5. And negative 2 right so what do I do with these terms I substitute them where I have my 3k so it's gonna be k squared plus I open a bracket because that's what I'm substitute I'm substituting 3k with 5 and negative 2 so I'm gonna have a 5k minus a 2k right that's what my 3k is represented by then I'm going to have a minus 10 is equal to zero right and then i just solve this right so how do i what's the next step of your trinomial method you have four terms so you can actually use grouping right which of the two seem nice to group either way so you're just going to take these two terms right as well as these two terms group them together by grouping i mean factorize these two on their own so it's going to be k squared plus 5k, right? What, how do I factorize? I take out what is common. So it's going to be taking out the k, right? Open brackets. If I take out, okay, let me do it on the side. Look at this. So it's k squared. I took out a k, so I need to divide by k, right? Remember the rules of exponents. Whenever you divide something that has the same basis, the power subtracts. So it's going to be 2 minus 1. So I'm going to have a k right and then i have a 5k over k the k's will get cancelled off and i'm left with 5 so meaning that on the inside of the bracket i'm going to have a k plus 5 right and then i have a minus 2k minus 10 right and then i need to um simplify and i mean i need to factor out right what is common so what is common between these two terms it's negative 2 so i factor out negative 2 the negative 2 gets cancelled off on the first term, and I have k. Negative 10 divided by negative 2 is a positive 5. So whenever you are using the quadrat, whenever you are factorizing, you need to ensure that the two brackets are identical, right? So that you can actually factor them out and then be left with whatever that is outside. Right? So k will be equal to negative 5. Or k will be equal to 2. But remember that what your k is. Your k is x is the square root of x minus 2. So I need to say the square root negative 5 is equal to the square root of x minus 2. Or 2 is equal to the square root of x minus 2. Right? And then how do I get rid of the square root side? I square both sides. So you need to square this side. And you also need to square this side. What is negative 5 squared? It's 25. Is equal to, 
the square root gets rid of the of the square root sign and i'm left with x minus 2 right and then x is going to be 25 plus the 2 because the 2 needs to go to the other side so x is going to be equal to 27 or on the other side i do the same thing i need to square both sides right and then i get a 4 is equal to x minus 2 right the x will go to the other side so it's going to be 4 plus 2 which is going to be a 6 so x is equal to 6 right and that brings us to the end of this video i hope that it helped you guys understand right but before we do that whenever you have a square root sign it has limitations so you need to check whether the square root sign actually com co confirms like what your equation was saying right so what you have to do is to substitute your two values into your calc into this equation so you're going to be like the square root of 27 minus 2 right plus 3 is equal to it's saying 8 on the other side right so it's saying 8 here is equal to i should get 10 over the square root of 27 minus 2 so it's equal to 2 so x cannot be 27 and that is very important you actually get a mark for saying that that is not equal to 27 let's look at the other part it says the square root of x minus 2 so i substitute 6 on the x minus 2 plus my 3 it's saying 5 on this side this was number one number two i'm just testing whether my values actually give me what the answers are right so 10 over the square root of 6 minus 2. You see that it gives me 5 on both sides. So this one is fine, but this one is not. That's how you get your marks. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. I hope this helped. I'm going to be doing a lot of past paper questions to help you guys with algebra, to help you guys with financial math and whatnot. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And good luck to the meticulous writer, we are prelims. Bye.